everyone, I'm Maddie and this is my GPS presentation. This is on the Garmin GTN 650 WAS. So a little bit of generic stuff about this system. Um, it is an IFR certified GPS with WAS capabilities. Um, it does have a touchscreen interface and this can be varied with the use of uh, your fingertips or there's a knob in the corner. It also has a direct to soft key. Um, it has options to ha use voice input. Um, I think Garmin calls it intelligence and uh, use the use of Bluetooth pairing capabilities uh, with certain systems, including devices of your personal use for for flight, Garmin Pilot, Flight Plan Go, etc. Um, they can also uh, pair internally with uh, Garmin G5, G500 systems, um, Aspen systems, and other and other um, types of displays, as well as certain autopilots. Um, if you choose to pair your G650 with a G430 or a G530, um, they can actually share information of your active fight plan, and um, you can choose what gets transferred and what is shown, and it's pretty cool that it works like that. So one thing that Garmin wanted to do with this system was easy access. And they all of the design features of the G650 um, have to do with ease of access for important information during flight. So it has a big alphanumeric keyboard um, when you're looking for waypoints. Um, it even has a small shelf on the bottom that you can rest your fingertips on. So in turbulence or other such conditions when you're kind of distracted, you don't go and hit random keys. You can actually hold your fingers down and touch those keys. Um, it also has a knob in the corner that you can use if you like to put things in manually instead of using your fingertip if um, that's what you're comfortable with. Um, you can use the direct to key that they have to enter a course and you can also go to the menu and you get all sorts of information. Um, and most importantly, it has right away um, nearest airports and waypoints, which can really help if you are in a little bit of a sticky situation with a diversion. Um, it includes in this list um, direct tracks to um, whichever waypoint you choose and the distance it'll take you to fly there. Um, the pilot, for the most part, can actually adjust these data fields that come up and it can, you can also input certain shortcuts, which is really handy if you have your own plane. Um, there's also an ability to um, pull up waypoint info. Um, you have NEXRAD weather and FISBE weather, so the METARs and stuff and um, frequencies and just a couple of taps. Uh, flight planning is super easy with the G650. G650. <laughs> um, so when you type in an identifier of a waypoint, airport, et cetera, um, it'll auto automatically from the first um, letter that, or number that you put in, it'll start searching for the nearest results. So within usually one or two um, keystrokes, unless you have something similar, it'll usually pop up in the corner. You can tap it, you're done. Um, you can also uh, load direct to um, flight plans, and you can also input Victor Airways, uh, high altitude jet routes, things like that. Um, they also have something called the rubber band adjustment. And what you do is if you have um, a point from A to B and you need to, say, avoid an airspace or something like that, you can just touch the, um, touch the line and move it to whichever point you choose. Um, you can preview your flight plan on the moving map, which is pretty handy, so you can see all your waypoints um, sequentially. Um, the moving map itself displays uh, terrain, topography, obstacles, airspace, all kinds of useful stuff in order to help you. Um, the airspace portion has details like altitude limits. It'll show you, um, just like on a sectional, which kind of airspace it is, and it will give alerts when you're within a certain distance or a certain time that it calculates from said airspace. It will also tell you when you're inside an airspace. Um, they also have this handy feature where they will emphasize or de-emphasize certain airspaces based on your altitude and the altitudes of um, the airspaces. So say if you're flying at 7,000 feet, it will turn a little delta airspace that goes up to 2,500 feet. It'll turn it more of a gray color because it, it doesn't matter as much. <clears throat> I, flying IFR with the G650 is really easy. I think I used it for my instrument and it was awesome. Um, because of its WASP capabilities, you can perform LPV approaches when it's available, um, which means that you can basically have a pseudo-localizer or a, an ILS approach 
which means you can get down to about 200 feet AGL, which is pretty cool. Um, it'll pair with uh, localizer, glide slope, and uh, VORs, of course, and will perform auto decoding. Um, so it will automatically take that Morse code and just decode it for you. Um, it will also, when you input um, approaches, it will put in the proper nav frequencies into the standby position on the nav portion. Um, it will also give, if you're flying VFR, you, it'll give you um, advisory glide slope guidance. Um, and this is based on either a regular three degree glide slope or with um, published uh, glide slope or glide path angles. So if it's higher or higher than um, three degrees, it will just use that for it anyway. Um, when it's coupled with an autopilot, it can handle holds, approaches, and missed approaches almost by itself, depending on the autopilot. Um, you can even um, create your own custom hold over any waypoint, and this could even be a waypoint that you design. And um, just in case, you know, ITC gives you a random hold point, you can just put it in and your autopilot can take care of it. Um, with approaches, you can either choose any number of the initial approach fixes, if available, or vectors to final, whichever ATC gives you. As far as comms and ADS-B go, um, for communications, finding frequencies is super easy. You go to the menu page and you can um, find nearby frequencies, recent frequencies, and saved ones. Um, it has the identifier shown below the frequency. So for instance, on this example, it's, I think, um, Oshkosh approach, uh, witted field approach, and then there's um, any number, so Fort Lauderdale Tower or ground or whatever, so you never are in any doubt of who you're talking to. Um, it'll decode the Morse code uh, when tuned to a station, so a VOR, etc., and will it'll display the ID in the nav box, so you don't even need to listen to the Morse code. Um, uh, for the ADSB. Um, it can show, the moving map can show up to 60 targets with um, trend tracking, which is pretty crazy. That's a lot of targets at once. <clears throat> um, it includes free ADSB weather, which includes FISB, which is the METAR reports and things, and NEXRAD, which shows precipitation and areas of precipitation um, and intensity with colors ranging from green to red. Um, they also have an option to subscribe to SiriusXM Weather or GSR 56, this latter one can actually field phone calls and text messages while you're flying and also has weather for the entire world. Um, the ADSB system shows um, targets. They show them as a little arrow in the direction that they're pointing um, as far as their ground track and it actually has a trend vector. Um, it also will show the relative altitude um, to you and will let you know if they're a little too close. And uh, if you tap on the target, it will show the info that they have about it. So the tail number, weight class of the aircraft, um, ground speed, and their speed in comparison to you. So as far as um, modern technology, everybody's got their opinions. And there are some advantages and disadvantages of having modern aviation technology. Um, a lot of the debate, if you've been in aviation for any amount of time, is a lot of opinion-based and preferential-based, and people get really heated about it. But there is credit to both sides on loving the glass cockpit and the traditional cockpit, the analog instruments. Um, most of these are, again, just opinions, and a lot of them are, again, preferential based. It's whatever you like to use. However, there are different studies and things that show how humans interact with these different systems. <clears throat> so there are benefits and drawbacks to having a glass cockpit. So um, some of the benefits that I found, and these are all cited um, by um, some studies that I found. So one of the biggest things with glass cockpits and one of the things that they love to talk about is increased safety. Um, all the equipment on there can enhance the overall safety of a flight if they're used properly. So you have um, your moving map, you have the outside air temperature gauge, like all even those simple things can really drastically help and also having all that information in front of you is very helpful as well. Um, in terms of accidents, the NTSB has reported that there is a lower total accident rate in comparison with traditionally equipped aircraft. Um, and also, if you've flown with glass, you understand how this feels, um, but you also get increased re um, visibility for things like weather, traffic, obstacles. You can't 
you only have your eyes when you're um, flying with a traditional cockpit. You, unless you have radar, you don't have any insight as to what planes are outside, what weather is in front of you or around you. So these things are um, really nice to have and can definitely help. Um, in the recent years, in the last five, five ten years, um, these instruments have become increasingly, re increasingly reliable. Failures do happen, and a lot of these are seemingly random just because of failed wires, et cetera. But for the most part, these have become very, very reliable. And the indications, so there's no reverse sensing, there's no attitude indicator tumbling. There's none of that because it is all um, different systems. They're mostly lasers. Um, and retrieval of information um, by the pilot with a glass cockpit is actually quicker than uh, with a traditional cockpit. So this study saw that um, there is actually a lower workload for the pilot with glass cockpits just because there is um, either all the information is right there. You don't have to go searching for anything. Now, as far as drawbacks um, and things that are could are or could be negative about glass cockpits <clears throat> is that the safety record for the fatal accidents is actually much higher than traditional. So although overall aircraft with glass cockpits, their accident rate is lower, their fatal accident rate is actually higher. Um, theories as to why this is, um, there's only just theories right now. Um, a lot of them it could be over-dependence on systems. So just not looking outside and just trusting that your ADSB is picking everybody up and colliding with another aircraft. Um, lack of training or lack of proficiency with a glass cockpit. Just like a traditional cockpit, there's a lot going on. But with the glass, there's certain things that you have to be aware of and be very, very proficient with and know that system like anything else, but it is more difficult usually to um, do this with a glass cockpit because everything's so accessible. Um, a lot of people think that um, it encourages um, inner cockpit over reliance. So just keeping your head down and watching the instruments instead of looking outside to your outside references. Um, a lot of um, CFIs say this, uh, whether or not that's true, I haven't found any studies for it. But there was a study done in 2005 that um, did mention that <clears throat> with glass cockpits and autopilots, a lot of airline pilots um, had a deficiency in manual flight skills and multitasking skills. So there's obviously um, pros and cons to both. However, my personal thoughts on this are that an aircraft is just as safe as its pilot. If an aircraft has three gauges, if it has a full G2000, it doesn't matter. If the pilot is proficient with those three gauges and that aircraft or that G2000 system and that aircraft, that will be a much safer flight than if you put one of the two in the separate cockpit and ask them to fly it because it just wouldn't be the same. There, You must keep proficient when you're flying, especially with glass because over-reliance is something that can happen. So just making sure that um, everything is... Um, the way it should be and that you know what's happening at all times during the flight is what will make your flight safer. Safer. Um, with a conscientious pilot, this system is fabulous. They, all these systems are, the glass cockpits, they're great. Um, they, it gives you a set of tools that you wouldn't be able to have normally. Um, you know, a lot of old pilots will say, oh, you're a child of the magenta line because I learned on glass. I did. And yes, I do have GPS, but it is a fabulous tool. And I think that it's silly to just brush that aside um, because it's making something that was actually really difficult, flight planning, into something that's not as bad. And plus all the tools, including weather and stuff, those help make a flight a lot safer. Um, things like uh, terrain and traffic avoidance can make what could have been a terrible accident into a non-issue because you know that aircraft is there or you know where the terrain is even though you're in IMC or whatever. Um, I think there is some credit to um, learning on a traditional analog cockpit. Um, as far as my personal experience goes, I have learned on glass and then I flew in a um, traditional cockpit for my commercial and my scanning techniques were different. The way that I looked at the cockpit was different. But one thing I did notice is that I would I often searched for things when I didn't have to with the glass cockpit because all the information was right in front of me. So 
I think there is credit to learning both. I think they're both fabulous systems. Um, with that being said, I don't think that technological advances should be um, either relied upon um, with reckless abandon, nor should they be tossed aside for nostalgia's sake. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I look forward to seeing all of yours as well. I hope everybody is happy, healthy, and I wish you guys safe flying.